Welcome home. This is Audio EXP for the 24th of September 2022. And the title of this episode is Are We the Baddies? Battle axes and brimstone are in the spotlight this month, as voted for by patrons. And the interview is up, and in the piece, Malachi and I cover what it was like growing up playing D&D in the American Midwest and during the Satanic Panic. As you can infer, it didn't put Malachi off the hobby. And we've not had to catch up for two weeks, because last Saturday I was on trains to Manchester and tabletop gaming live. Two things annoyed me on the train. First, I got an email announcing the winners of the Tabletop Gaming Awards 2022. Now, imagine not having that as an event on Saturday for their live show. It also meant I couldn't write the winners up until I got back after the weekend. The second thing was that while I was on the train, my phone alerted me to the unwelcome news that my connection had been cancelled. The second train necessary to get from Scotland to England wouldn't be running. Fortunately, I was able to do some research, find an alternative route, and find a way to get to Manchester without too much delay or the need for a new ticket. Now, I'm telling you this only because last time we spoke I was talking about adventures, and sadly that is the best I can do. Although I suppose you can add my battle to prove to the train company's Wi-Fi system that I was on their Wi-Fi while I also safely stayed behind my VPN. I actually lost that battle. I needed to pop off very briefly to validate. So, as for those Tabletop Gaming Awards 2022 winners, I won't list them all on the podcast as you can find them on Geek Native, but the best board game went to Capstone Games' Ark Nova, and the best RPG went to Pizio's for Pathfinder 2nd Edition. And there... Starting the podcast with complaints makes me sound like a mooner. I try not to be these days, but sorry to say, I also find myself sniping at Fandom's State of Gaming report. There's no tabletop section in Fandom's report, they've sold Cortex and D&D Beyond and they've moved on. Instead, they look at NFTs, the metaverse, subscription bundles and esports. I did like that they made esports a part of a broader category called competitive gaming. Perhaps I'm just old, but some game titles just don't feel very sporty to me, and it really is all about that professional level of competition. But what I didn't like was the tone of voice in their NFT and metaverse summaries. Phantom's research says that gamers don't like NFTs. And fandom conclude this is because gamers don't understand NFTs. And then they have some evidence. When fandom told gamers about all the good that NFTs could do, but neglected to mention that NFTs were involved, and they followed that up with a, is this good? Then gamers said yes. Now, my concerns are twofold. Firstly, that's a dodgy way to do a report. You know, you're leading the answers, and it obscures the cost behind the benefit. Secondly... We often see with NFTs, some of their strength are sold on ideas that don't actually need the NFT technology to make happen. And we don't know if that happened here. Now, Fandom also said gamers weren't interested in the metaverse yet, and they concluded that was because gamers didn't understand the metaverse. Why do gamers not want to always pay subscription fees for games, according to Fandom? Well, if you guessed it's because those gamers don't understand the benefits of subscription fees, then you'd be right. Well, with me being so judgy, I thought I'd better channel some of that at myself. And after lots of internal wrestling this week, I wrote up and released the Geek Native AI policy. In summary, I do use machine learning on the site. And when that's art, I will tell you. I don't see machine learning as consistently wrong, but some origin stories are not great, and I recognise the negative impact it could have on creators. Now, for example, I use Grammarly to help proof my articles, and I don't see the need to disclose that, and it seems to be a relatively benign way to use so-called AI. However, I am starting to mess around with the likes of Midjourney as a way to get art into articles, and when I do that, I'll say so. 
Furthermore, Geek Creative is a loss-making hobby designed to let me do what I do and hopefully put some cash back into the community. The blog and patrons' fees are exclusively about raising money to pay for artists and writers. I will not be reducing that at all. Hopefully, I can do more if audiences grow. Now, there's been more news than fandom and Geek Native digging into technology, so let's get into that. Even the Washington Post is covering the new TSR and dodgy RPG content battles now. They ask whether trademark lore can stop racism. Yes, racism. Now, there's a Mitch on the web sketch set in World War II where two SS officers dressed in black leather and, you know, and skulls turn to one another and ask, Are we the baddies? I'm reminded of that. The D&D 3.5 core rules are back in print. Well, that's to say you can now get the player's handbook, the Dungeon Master's Guide, the Monster Manual, and even the Rules Companion as hardback print-on-demand from DriveThruRPG. I know, those won't be cheap, but it is a way to stock those on your geeky shelves if you've missed out. Wizards of the Coast also listened to people worrying that they would be missing it in the future, and so they changed their minds before fully announcing a decision. Now, let me explain. The DMs Guild sent out a newsletter to say that some Adventure League downloads would be removed from the store. And people worried, because that decision would have all sorts of ripples, and, if nothing else, it would take Adventure League content away from people wanting it. Wizards then said they would scrap those plans. The publisher also acknowledged it was a bit weird hearing about that from DMs Guild first, and so they promised to make sure that such news came from them first in the future. I think I can squeeze in one bit more of D&D news before I worry about making this short podcast too long. I do want to call out Hippie Nerd Sea Witch's 5e character sheet. That's also on drive-thru RPG, and it's entirely made from cats. Your tribute boxes, fat cats. The equipment box on your character sheet, it's a cat. The skill section, also drawn as a cat. Now, there are a lot of catching up to do with bundles and deals, and I don't want you to miss out. But first, let me tell you about Mournblade. Mournblade is the official Elric Saga tabletop RPG. Elric is a Michael Moorcock story about a troubled emperor in a dark world, dangerous adventures, and politics. A French publisher called Le Department, and what a great name, has been publishing the tabletop RPG in French. Now... In support of an its upcoming Elric board game, the department has translated Moonblade into English. And you can get that as a PDF through the Kickstarter as an add-on, but there are plans for a retail release. There are some freebies to tell you about. There's the Cyberpunk Red Easy Mode, which isn't the quick start to Cyberpunk Red. That costs cash and isn't new. This is an even slimmer product, but it is enough to test the game. Cyberpunk 2077 is having a bit of return to fashion on the back of Netflix's Edge Runners anime, so this freebie is well timed. Ninth Level Games have also released their 2022 anthology Level 1. There are more than a dozen different short RPGs from loads of indie creators. I recommend both. Now, let's do those bundles and finish up on a geek native competition. At the bundle of holding, There's the Apocalypse Engine 5, which has the underrated Last Fleet in their starter tiers. There's a flash sale on Knights of the Dinner Table. And there's an introduction to Trokia Worlds. On Humble, there's a new batch of Warhammer 40k audiobooks and of RPG comics. And I've read some of Skull Kickers, and I will happily recommend the series too. Lastly... And really generously, there's a mega bundle from Grey Nodens for Mutants and Masterminds. You get about $500 worth of downloads for about 30 bucks, And you can get that from DriveThruRPG or from Grey Noden. As it happens, a highlight of my trip to Manchester like last week was a surprise encounter with Grey Noden boss Chris Pramas, who had been dislodged like the rest of the country from plans due to the historical event of the Queen's death. That uh, puts my need to research a train connection while hurtling towards the station into perspective, doesn't it? To wrap up, and with goodies I bought at Tabletop Scotland, I have some Chaos Curios candles to give away to listeners in the UK. 
bop over to the blog to find out how to enter. Oh, and the technical problems on the site seem to have settled down for now. Phew. On that note, beware of travel and WordPress gremlins, and I'll see you next week.